Have you ever felt out of your depth in the modern world? Maybe you're the one who's being dragged out to have a, quote, good time. But really, all you want to do is stick on your PJs and watch telly. Then you get on well with our guy here today. This is a tale of one man seeking out a pilsner in a world full of farmhouse wheat session IPAs. This is Dude, Where Is My Beer? Hello and thanks for tuning in to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and in this video we'll be sampling Dude, Where Is My Beer? A self-titled classic point and click adventure game. Before I delve into the full review, I make purely adventure game content, so if you'd like to see more from me, it'd be lovely if you hit that subscribe button and showed the video some love with a like. Bottoms up! Dude, Where Is My Beer? is the debut game from developers Arik Zarabian and Edu Brenes. What started out as more of a hobby between the two artists slowly grew into the game we see here today. The premise is a simple one. We've just arrived in Oslo after a lengthy bus trip with just enough time to head to a bar for a refreshing beer, specifically a pilsner. The problem though is that no matter how hard we look, we only find bearded hippie joints with strange floaty things in bizarrely named craft beer. The world we once inhabited has evolved and left us behind and has been populated with sardonic tattooed bar staff, onesie wearing ignorant fools and beards. Loads of beards. We are a mustachioed middle aged man in a polo shirt and blue jeans. We're what can only be described as normal I guess. There's no frills. The only people we're able to talk to at the start are the bar staff unless we down a drink or two and once we have some alcohol in us, we loose it up a bit. We're never really angry or prickly, even when we're charged 24 euros for a beer. Sure, we feel a little cheated about this, but our annoyance is just bubbling on the surface rather than overflowing. As we delve deeper into the search for that elusive pilsner, every single person in the city seems to share the opposite view we have. Craft beer good, pilsner bad. The people we meet are mostly unhelpful, disrespectful, flippant and dismissive. Only a handful decide to speak to us with any form of dignity. Largely though, this doesn't really matter as all we really want is that pilsner. We're not here to make friends. Once we've traipsed through every single bar in the city, it quickly becomes clear that all is not what it seems. Maybe there's some sort of conspiracy. The puzzles in our way to the Holy Grail are quite taxing. I'd actually go as far to say it's the trickiest point and click I've played in a long time, for a few reasons. Firstly, the inventory. Over the course of the game, there's quite a large list of things we pick up, with some seeming to be utter rubbish. I mean, literally, we even pick up an apple core at one point. Once the city had been investigated and I was a little stuck, I had a huge inventory with around 15 to 20 items to use. Now, don't get me wrong, I enjoy a big inventory, but it certainly ramps up the complexity. Secondly, there are different layers to our character depending on how much alcohol has been consumed. There's a handy beerometer in the top right hand corner, so after a quick pint we become slightly tipsy. Now this means the ability to talk to strangers is opened. So if we drink a little more, we become even more tipsy leading to actions we couldn't, or wouldn't do, now being able to be applied. Our inebriated state fluctuates going into and out of bars. The second we exit a bar, we lose a level on the beerometer. We can, however, carry around bottles of ale to up our drunkenness whilst we're out in public. Some puzzles require us to be a particular level of drunk to complete, so when I had an inkling of what I had to do, I'd try it sober, slightly tipsy and tipsy to see if any of it worked. There are also characters and sequences that appear after certain puzzles have been completed. What I found the trickiest though was the logic in some puzzles. It was truly fun and new to try different ways to complete a puzzle in various forms of drunkenness. But from a logical point of view, there were one or two questionable choices that I had to make to move the story forwards. To avoid any spoilers, all I'll say here that making a smoothie was a bit problematic. All this complexity though is not a bad thing. It's great to see a game really take the ball by its horns and make you think a lot. It's a very striking game and the art, created by Arik and Edo, is fantastic. Using tones of red and greys only, it definitely looks distinctive. To control our guy, the classic LucasArts verbs are in use. Absolutely love it. Click on a verb, click on the screen, you know the rest. 
With less and less games using them these days, I appreciated the nostalgic, sentimental use. Sticking with the classic mold, there is no hint system, no hotspot finder, and loads of save spots. There's no autosave, so you can save as and when you like. In fact, the only thing I'd say that's not in the classic mold is the art. It's beautifully hand-drawn. There are no pixels here. In terms of the music, it sounds incredible. It comes from David Bork and incorporates everything from gypsy string swing to Indian music through to 90s trance. There's no voice acting in the game except for a really annoying baby, but again, I'm on board with this. It's a classic point and click game. I must state that the game does not glorify drinking in any way. It just paints it as a really refreshing drink, just the one that you're in search of just to sip and enjoy to pass away the time. Dude, Where Is My Beer is an extraordinarily good entry in the classic point and click genre, and my glass is certainly half full rather than half empty. It's released on Steam on November the 5th, 2020, and it's priced at $15, which is about £12. Cheers! Thank you for watching my review of Dude, Where Is My Beer? It'd be lovely if you could hit the subscribe and like button. Links to the game and more from me, including my new Patreon, can be found in the description below. Until next time, take care.